Hey guys, welcome back to the Chesnoid FC Creator Club mode here on FIFA 22. Thank you for all of your feedback on the recent episodes. I recorded two or three in advance after the end of the transfer, or including the end of the transfer window and a couple after. Um, <laughs> all I can say is sorry for not signing Kasun. That seemed to be the overwhelming feedback was I should have signed Franjo Kasun on a free. So uh, apologies for that. There was a rather large calling as well to sign Jaden Braff on a free. So he's still available for free. So I'll sign him. Uh, we'll bring him in and he'll probably take the squad position ahead of our current other rotation winger, Leo Hyde. Even though Hyde is a couple of ratings higher rated, rather obviously, uh, Jaden Braff has the better potential. So... We'll sign Jaden Braff. We'll bring him in at your guys' request. And uh, I'll leave... Oh, I didn't want to take wind off the list there. I pressed the wrong button. Kasun will stay on the shortlist. And if the opportunity arises to sign him in the future, then we will do so. But Braff is now in and he'll go off straight there for Leo Hyde. And uh, that's another signing added to the club at your request. May actually look to sell Leo Hyde in that case. And uh, hopefully Sanchez can get some good loan experience and he might be a good backup go-to winger in a couple of seasons' time. We'll have to wait and see how things progress. Right, moving forward then today for the actual played games. We start with Forest. We're going to play Forest. We're going to play Bournemouth. We're going to play Fulham. We'll see Bolton in the Cup and Derby at home in the league. Looking to actually win games in a row today rather than be 1-0 up and then have... Uh, the opposition equalised late on, which happened twice in three games yesterday. Zach Carr, however, does have the most clean sheets in the league so far this season. Five clean sheets from 12 games and 12 goals conceded. So defensively, we're actually pretty good this year, which is not something I'm usually able to say. So hopefully, if we can start to add the goals to go with those minimal goals conceded, then... We should fly up the table. All right, Saunders is going to go out on loan to Fulham, which is good. That's another move done for the January transfer window when that arrives. Still not sure what I'm going to do in January. Waiting for further feedback on that. We'll have to wait and see what you guys say. But for now, I'm going to crack on, and I will see you in the game against Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest line up as you see them there. Alex Mighton out wide for them. Janini up top in what I think was a 4-3-3. 4-2-3-1. Cafu sat just behind him. Johnson on the right-hand side. Forest, uh, well, they were above us, weren't they? They were about fifth, I think, in the table. So having a decent season. We're not too far behind them points, tally-wise. But we are definitely lower than them in the league. So a side that will definitely give us a test. Quickly to Mighton. Quick feet to slow down from that. Aronson seemingly absolutely no interest whatsoever in trying to stick a toe out to get to that ball. And Zach Carr does really well. To get a hand to that. Not only a hand to it, but to hold on to it too. There was some call in the comment section. I meant to mention this in the intro. for From you guys, for Jack Stevenson to get some games ahead of Zach Carr. He absolutely, unfortunately, at the moment, is not in a position to challenge for that first team spot. Whilst his overall rating isn't that far behind Zach Carr, in key areas... Oh my god. In key areas... He's still very much lacking. Like, Carr's positioning is 76. Jack Stevenson's is 61. It's only his high kicking of 79 that is meaning his overall is as high as it is. He's still actually severely lacking in a number of areas. And he's four inches shorter than Zach Carr as well. So if six foot four Carr can't get to shots like that, then certainly... Six. I mean, he's not even close. He could have been seven foot four and he wouldn't have got to it. What a strike by Janini. We are behind early doors. And uh, we've been conceding a handful of shots from distance like that recently. Certainly a trend that seems to be developing here. And not one that I like the look of. Driven down the line to Dian Garner, but I've got no room. Forrest are so well drilled positionally that I'm sh particularly having trouble in finding a way through. Grady Dian Garner out wide or floated looking for Lewis Ferguson who's won the header well and Horvath makes a very good save. Really good delivery from Grady Dian Garner on that far side and a good leap from Lewis Ferguson and a fairly decent header too but it certainly was comfortable enough for the goalkeeper. 
Can Uwe Martin get to that? He can, but that's gone well high and wide. Well high and wide. I might... I might swap Martin and Itakura around. Uwe Martin's actually started to decline in racing, something to keep an eye on. Uh, and then maybe Itakura should hopefully now be that man that the ball goes to more regularly from set pieces like corners. And Itakura certainly would have a better record on goal if he was the one on the end of those balls rather than rather than Uwe Martin because Martin's been on the end of those crosses countless times and has scored about twice in two and a half seasons. Dian Garner again in behind. I'll stand it up looking for Randy and Tekka and we will score this time. The header goes in and Randy is rampant. We have an equaliser. Ferguson We'll try and get the ball down the line quickly if we can to have one more chance at the end of this first half. Grady Dean Garner trying to bully his way through and he's done brilliantly to do so. Now just need the space for the cross and we'll take the corner and we will have that cross. And oh, despite changing the centre-backs around, it is still Uwe Martin here at near post duty, annoyingly. Now watch him score a header. No. Good header by Yates. Can Aronson get the shot away? He can. Is it going to dip? The answer is yes, and it very nearly ended up in the back of the net. Pop it a bit deeper, and then maybe Itakura could be underneath it, but he does an Uwe Martin and misses the target. <laughs> maybe I should just give up trying to score from corners. Alvarez will switch it. Looking for Grady Dian Garner out wide. He's had the, the fullback on strings all game. And Randy and Tech is in behind here. Oh, and Olvath makes another good stop to deny us another goal. 1 1 has been. A rather regular scoreline recently. Hopefully. Oh, he's gone for the bloody scorpion kick. Can you believe it? Hopefully we can add a second on this occasion. No, don't let them score a second. We're going to go from nearly scoring a, or having opportunity to score a scorpion kick. Oh, my God. Off the post. Off the post. Jesus. Alex Mighton is apparently pretty damn good. Good block. Oh, dearie me. Nearly 2-1 up. Nearly 2-1 down. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> nice interception by Ferguson, but not going to get the chance to build anything from it. A 1-1 one, one draw seems to be the scoreline of choice at the moment for this team, although on this occasion we had to come from behind to get the points rather than getting pegged back. And their keeper made a number of good saves, as did Zach Carr. They hit the post with Alex Mighton as well. So I think a point is probably a fair result between two promotion-chasing sides there. Today's episode is against a number of sides that are challenging up towards the top end of the table and want to consider themselves contenders for not just playoff football but automatic promotion as well. And we'd very much like to consider ourselves one of those as well. We're both two committed sides out there trying to get the victory and neither defence would budge any further than just a single goal. Bournemouth up next away from home. Rather obviously we're going to have to rotate a little bit but hopefully we can still get the result. Bournemouth with uh, yeah, Nyland in goal, Dom Solanke as the front forward man in a 4-3-3, Billing, Lerma and Jamal Lowe centrally for them, Christie wide on the right, Glover wide on the left, Pascal Strauch actually at uh, left back for them, former Leeds man, I've slightly rotated, I probably should have left that on screen so I could show you, Ben Brereton Diaz starts up top, Jaden Braff gets a start on the left, Woods in at Cam and Amadou in at centre back. The only changes for me? Right. Three points this time, please. I don't want to go 1-1 one, one draw, 1-1 one, one draw, 1-0 one, win this time. I want 1-1 one, one draw and now back-to-back -back victories. And hopefully four victories in the remaining games today with two played games to, do, to go, including this one. And then a sim game in the cup and a sim game in the league after that. Brereton, I'll just lift this, hoping that... Oh, Jaden Braff can get on the end of it. And he very nearly did. But the defender gets a little bit lucky. Billy lofted ball over the top. Iago will bring that down and find Jaden Braff. Right. Who's, well, I've got loads of players itching to make runs. You can see Aronson on the far side making a good one. Brings it down nicely, but Strack takes it off him. Decent ball by Jaden Braff, that. He doesn't have the best technical stats at all, Jaden Braff. He's certainly got a lot of improving to do, but... It is the availability of that growth that was your guys' reason for wanting him to sign. He may only be still 72 rated only, but he does have potential of 
the early 80s. So we're hoping to uh, to see quite considerable growth from Jaden Brath throughout the course of this save. From now until basically the end of it, he could well be our go-to winger in potentially Premier League winning and European title winning seasons. We'll lift that up. And can we get there? No. It's going to come back to Aronson under control again. Into the middle again. Jaden Braff going for the overhead kick. Barrett. Oh, Ben Brereton. Blocked by Greenwood. Delivered into the middle here. Iago could be underneath this. He's not. It's Cook. I'm going to try and nod this down. Aronson will fight it to Kura. He won't score from there. Oh, and Iago, the ball wasn't meant for you. It was meant for the man over there. Never mind. It's still nil nil after 25 minutes. Bournemouth yet to. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> I was about to say, Bournemouth yet to really cause us any problems. And then they very nearly set a man through one-on-one. -on -one. Driven out to Aronson. I see him on the run there, Ben Brereton. And he's in. And he's in. Oh, brilliant save by the goalkeeper. Ireland with an excellent stop. Solanke wins that header to knock it down to Jamal Lowe. And the frustration continues here at the Vitality. We've had all of the play. Can't seem to score the goal. Whoa, for a moment I thought I'd kick that straight to Dom Solanke. We can't seem to score the goal that we need to take the 1-0 lead. Ferguson into Ben Brereton again, looking to turn creator this time. It's Alexander Woods! There's the goal that we've been looking for! Up the Chesnoid FC. It's him again. It's him again. Alexander Woods just performs. He might not have the best stats. He might not have the best potential. But he has an end product. All over the top. Christie brings it down nicely. And this is dangerous. Solanke out wide, Glover, sharp turn, finds Dom Solanke again. Excellent block by Itakura. Practically lay on the floor there to try and ensure that the ball didn't get through. And we will get rid of this before half time. We'll lead at the break by a goal to nil. And hopefully at the end as well. Christy, you just wait for that burst of pace from him, but you just you can't predict when it's going to come, nor can you deal with it when it does. Smith inside to Jefferson Lerma. Here's Philip Billing. Tom Solanke, Jamal Lowe, option out wide. Lovely touch by Glover. Oh, and talk about a finish from Dom Solanke. Wow. The quality of goal that our opposition have been scoring against us today and in the past couple of episodes has been spectacular. That from I thought, I thought in that position, I had Dom Solanke dealt with, with three defenders around him and him on his left-hand side. I thought... There's not really much he can do there. The one thing he could do was that. Jesus Christ, what a goal. Christie. He's just so quick. So fast. Cannot deal with Christie. Tom Solanke, nice tackle. Right, away we come. Ferguson to Aronson. Ben Brereton could keep that run going. Oh, and we could have found him well. That ball was destined to find him, I'm sure of it. And the defender somehow got in the way. Masson looks for Brereton as well, and he can't find him either. Seemingly not allowed to be played in behind Ben Brereton at the moment. Solanke, Jamal, Solanke, Solanke, Jamal Lowe to Lerma, Christie looking for Solanke. Jesus Christ, what has gotten into Dom Solanke today? He's got a foot like a traction engine. Two on Bournemouth. Stroud to Dom Solanke. Picked off nicely by Masson. Fuck knows what that pass was. And I think that sums up this second half performance from us. Dom Solanke decided that he was on crack in that second half. Two ridiculously powerful finishes. And Bournemouth turned it around from half time. From 1-0 down to 2-1 up. And supposedly they were the only highlights in the game. Four shots apiece. Not good at Amadou with a 5.2. Ugh. I didn't think he was that bad. I didn't think we were that bad. Bournemouth a very good side, obviously, for the level that we're playing at. But still, the unbeaten run couldn't last forever. But it's just been too many draws. I don't mind taking the odd defeat if it means we're getting wins in other games. But we're drawing other games and then getting the odd defeat. We just didn't take our chances today. Oh, Dom Slack. If it weren't for Dom Solanke... And his single-mindedness single -mindedness to just destroy me in that uh, second half. Then we'd have gotten a good result there. 
Ah, uh, Russia sold. Confirmation of that. Just good news. More money added to the coffers. Another fringe player sold on. Fulham away next. Fulham top of the table. And, uh, oh, I mean, we're only f still only four points off the playoffs. It's still very tight. Fulham and Norwich, though, running away with the league. Again, there's two at the top that just keep pulling away. Fulham still unbeaten. They've won 11 of their 14 so far. So probably 12 of 15 with the way that I'm playing right now. Fulham with Gazaniga in goal. Steven Session at right back. To Silva, Harrison Reed, Damo and Gisa. Chengi Zunde in their starting lineup. Harry Wilson there as well. 4 2 3 1 from the Chengi Zunde. Hello. Not a player you would expect to be playing at championship level. Absolutely not. Harry Wilson scored a good goal against us last time we played Fulham, if I recall correctly. And, uh, well, on the back of the Bournemouth game, I'm not entirely too confident at the moment. Aronson on the breakaway, looking for Enteke. It was a terrible pass, but we'll slot that through for Alvarez. And he should be in here. He's quick enough, surely, to work the chance. Oh! But he's not got the finish on the end of it. A really good opportunity for Julian Alvarez there. Getting away from the defenders that were around him. But pulls the shot agonisingly past the post. A bright start though from him. We haven't been good enough in any of the games really that I've played today. Oh, he's making a nice little bursting run there. Found again. Oh, why do they keep scoring absolute worldies against me? Every goal we concede at the minute is just a stunner. I'm starting to get pretty annoyed, you know. Starting to get pretty annoyed. Every goal we concede at the minute is just unsavable. Oh, my God. I mean, he's... Oh, Jesus Christ. What can you do against that? Honestly, unsavable. Outrageous from them. And from Bournemouth. And from Forest. Just ridiculous. He's supposed to compete. Back to Tosin. Dug out. Can Uwe Martin get to that? Not really. Not convincingly anyway. Cengiz under Steven Sessegnon. I'm trying to get tighter. Easier said than done. Oh, brilliant save. Away. Away. Oh, my God. Zach Carr. What a stop onto the post. That was... I could have sworn I bowled that out to the winger. But never mind. Come on, Grady. Get away from everyone around you. Lay that inside to Randy Inteco. Slot that through for Julian Alvarez. And score a bloody goal. Oh, 1-1 against Fulham. Such relief. This has been so difficult, this episode. Like, properly, properly tough. This championship division is so competitive. So competitive. It's outrageously tough to get out of this league. Trying desperately to do so, but still lacking some quality in playing staff and in managerial ability. Lovely spin by Aronson. Come on then. Lewis Ferguson's made a good run and the pass is decent. No! Oh, come on. That's the pass I need to get through. That's what I don't have and haven't had for the entire goddamn save. That final ball in key moments like that, where you just need that through ball to make it to its target and you're in for a goal. Oh, and again, just an extra little touch. It's just too much. I can't do it. I'll look for Randy and Tekka. Please score this. At least get it on target, Randy. Oh, God. Go on, Grady. Oh, just little touches. It's just the little things that just don't seem to go our way in this save. Not just this season, in this save. That's a terrible pass, by the way. So inaccurate. On his favoured foot, with an obvious avenue to play the pass through, he still can't find it. Bobby De De Cordova reed is causing me problems here on this left-hand side, but Darnell Fisher gets a good toe in, and we actually win the throw there. Finally, something little goes my way, but it's probably too little, too late. Three minutes added on here. Alexander Woods will switch this out looking for Grady Angana, but I just don't have the bodies forward to help me here. Oh, and then you uh, try and play the pass, and I just get caught in possession. You can probably see, just from the highlights that you get to see, just how frustrating... It is to get results right now. The little things, those passes, that counter-attack where I had me, defender, Randy and Tekka, defender, and a man free. I just need that ball to make it through. And the defenders are just so good at throwing a toe out and getting something on it. And I can't do that in defense. Oh, tough. 
tough games in the championship at the top end. Really tough games. We might have to settle, settle for a playoff spot again this year at best. We were resilient defensively. I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that uh, we've been keeping clean sheets and or not conceding many goals. But I just can't... I can't keep clean sheets. I can't keep clean sheets. I don't feel like I'm keeping many. Even I was surprised when I saw that Zach Carr had five in 12 games. Because, I, especially of late... 1-1, one, 1-1, 2-1, 1-1, 3-2. 1-1, 2-1, 1-1. There just... There aren't many clean sheets in there. There really aren't. But Bolton next in the Carabao Cup. Which should be a pretty straightforward fixture. Chance to get us through to the quarterfinals of the cup. Chance for some fringe players to get some more first team football as well. Transfer offer from Seattle Sounders for Ryan or Reggie Bird even. Jimmy Madranda. I don't want the exchange player, but I'll oh, just delegate. I, I just I don't I don't care. I just want him gone. I just want him gone. All of the fringe players that we just can't seem to move on finally are starting to get some bids come in for them. Um, how long is there between this and the game at the weekend? Not long, not long. I'll rotate a little bit, but then we'll sim this game. So Dean Garner will come out. And to be fair, I don't need to rotate any more than that, really. Right, come on, lads, please. Let's get through to the next round of the cup, and then let's take it from there and get three points against Derby. You guys are thoroughly enjoying the struggle, which is great from an entertainment point of view. Oh, I'm having a tough time, though, getting these results that I want. Alvarez with the brace there against Bolton. We are through to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. The opportunity to potentially get a cup final and or some opportunities in Europe if we're able to make it all the way through. I'm going to switch Aronson and Diangana over again. See if that can offer us something else in the next episode that I record. Derby at home. A bid, a loan bid for Gash. Just, he's not going to get loan football anywhere. He's not going to get first team football anywhere else. We keep getting loan bids from clubs that just, in real life, would have no interest in him whatsoever. So, I don't feel bad rejecting that. Like, why would Leon and Arsenal want to loan a 72 rated central midfielder? It's just nonsense. Dean Garner with a fucking hat trick on the right hand side of that front three to give us a 3 0 win against Derby County. Where has that form been? Progress assessment, what's that about? Uh. Oh, sorry. Oh, Jesus. I've had my scout out looking in Chile. He's just not found anything so far. Let's see if he's found anything now. 66 to 90. No, he's rubbish. 64 to 90. No, he's rubbish. 63 to 87. He's rubbish too. 57 to 79. He's rubbish. 72 to 94. Maybe Mark Sands. Maybe Mark Sands could be half decent, but it doesn't look like anything really is going to go according to plan at the moment. Transfer deal done. 1.9 million pounds. Thank you very much. Let's get that done. And then that's another one out of the door. Well, that win against Derby has brought us up to seventh. We were on a decent unbeaten run before we played Bournemouth. We've only lost four games. Just I'm drawing too many. Six draws in 16 games just isn't quite good enough. The top two are just <laughs> gone. Again, those automatic promotion spots. We just can't get close to them at the moment. We came close towards the very end of last season, but only because the top two fell away. That may happen again this year, but 15 and 16 points from second and first, respectively. Unbelievable that the top two every single season just disappear. Well, three points off the playoffs, four points off fourth. We're still very much in the promotion hunt, and we're still only really stumbling along. So... As we, as I always find myself saying, as soon as we put together a run of form, we'll be right in the picture. I just can't put together that run of form. I can go on an unbeaten run, but I can't yet go on a winning run. A what winning run, please? Maybe that will happen tomorrow. I'll see you then.